When Resident Evil came out in 1996, it started a revolution. Fear had a new face, and its name was Survival Horror. In the years that followed, dozens of copycat games attempted to capitalize on the success of Capcom's atmospheric masterpiece. Those copycat games established survival horror as an official genre. Unfortunately, that genre is based on a lie, and that's because of the way video games are marketed in Japan. In the land of the rising sun, publishers sometimes create fake genre names to help a new release stand out in the crowd. When Devil May Cry came out in 2001, Capcom marketed that game as stylish action, but a few years later, Platinum referred to Bayonetta as Climax Action. Devil May Cry and Bayonetta are the same kind of game. They might not have the exact same mechanics, but that doesn't mean they belong to separate genres. As it just so happens, survival horror is another corporate genre name that was created as a buzzword for journalists to throw around, back when video game journalism actually meant something. Then Resident Evil went on to be such a groundbreaking success that the name survival horror just sort of stuck. Interestingly enough though, everybody in Japan is fully aware that these corporate genre names are just advertising gimmicks, and sometimes part of the hype surrounding a big budget release is waiting to see what kinds of crazy terminology will be used to sell the game. So clearly, it's a technique that works. Despite that though, most of these fake genre names know how to stay in their lane, because pretty much everybody understands that they're just nonsense terms that aren't supposed to replace any genre names that have already been established. The exception to that is survival horror, and the fact that that term's gone unchecked for as long as it has is a downright travesty. So something's gotta change, because the term survival horror has been wreaking havoc on game designers and players alike for the past three decades, and if things don't change, then things are really gonna get scary. Alright, I gotta draw a line in the sand. The word horror should never be used in the name for a game genre, because unlike passive mediums like books and movies, games are defined by their gameplay, not the emotions they're trying to make you feel. That's why survival horror is a huge problem. You can't have a single genre that follows a different set of rules than all the others. And contrary to popular opinion, there's no such thing as horror game mechanics. See, gameplay mechanics are universal. They're the same for everybody, like a shared dream experience. But horror is a subjective feeling. It differs from person to person. Take me, for example. I straight up don't have a fear response when playing games that are meant to be scary. Even the cheapest of jump scares has absolutely no effect on me. That's not to say I've never felt afraid while playing a game, though. When you got three level ups worth of souls in your pocket and you don't know how long it's gonna be until you reach the next bonfire, any souls-like is gonna have you shaking in your boots. Actually, now that I mention it, I've heard tons of people say that souls-likes are the scariest games they've ever played. And yet, no one would dare call a souls-like a survival horror game, or vice versa. But it seems like the only requirement to be considered a survival horror game is to be scary. Or at least try to be. Over the years, a lot of people have attempted to define the gameplay mechanics associated with survival horror, and every single one who's tried has failed. Miserably. It's commonly accepted that survival horror games have you play as an underpowered character with limited attack options, forcing you to avoid enemies instead of engaging them head on. Oh, so like a stealth game in other words. Which is why it's no coincidence that survival horror games started to feature more and more stealth mechanics soon after the term was first coined. But even the original Resident Evils were stealth games, it's just that their stealth mechanics were, uh, hiding. Check this out. In your typical stealth game, the player has to avoid enemy sight lines, and sometimes this is represented by a vision cone that's projected into the environment. The classic example of this is the radar screen in Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. In the old school Resident Evils though, you had less room to move around, so the stealth experience had to be condensed to work within the more confined living spaces. Instead of an abstract vision cone, enemy sight lines are represented by a zombie's outstretched arms, and you're safe as long as you keep the zombies at arm's length as you navigate through the level. Resident Evil 2 took things a step further, in an effort to give players better feedback on their ability to sneak around. Zombies start off with their arms at their side, letting you know you're at a safe distance. When you get a little too close for comfort, they raise their arms, kinda like a caution mode or a suspicious enemy in a normal stealth game. And then, when you're just within arm's reach, zombies go into full-blown alert mode and charge. 
That's an oversimplified breakdown of Resident Evil's gameplay, but the point is that what we've all been calling survival horror for nearly 30 years have actually been stealth games. So does that mean that other survival horror games are really just stealth games in disguise? Like Silent Hill, for example. And the truth is, it's hard to say, because as surprising as it might sound, Konami never marketed Silent Hill as a survival horror game. You might be surprised to learn that Capcom never intended for survival horror to become the umbrella term that it is today. They never even planned on using it for other horror games. That term was created for Resident Evil, and only for Resident Evil. Okay. I think most people would agree that, in terms of gameplay, the original Dino Crisis is basically a reskin of Resident Evil, just with dinosaurs instead of zombies. The game was even made by the same team as RE1, with Shinji Mikami once again in the director's chair. When Dino Crisis was released in 1999, Capcom had already released two survival horror games before that, Resident Evil 1 and 2. So naturally, Dino Crisis would have also been marketed as a survival horror game, the genre that Capcom itself had created. But that's not what happened. The marketing genre given to Dino Crisis was panic horror. Well, the hole is nice and clean. That's what she said! <laughs> okay, so hold on a second. It's not like Resident Evil was the first horror game ever made. So what were scary games called before the term survival horror was created? From what I was able to find, horror wasn't used to describe game genres until Resident Evil in 1996. Instead, games were classified into genres based on what their gameplay consisted of, as the gods intended. Sweet Home, the game based on the movie that Resident Evil was originally supposed to be a remake of, that was just called an RPG when it was released on the NES in 1989. And then Alone in the Dark, the game that inspired Resident Evil's use of fixed camera angles and pre-rendered backgrounds, that was described as a virtual adventure. After Resident Evil, though, developers and publishers were quick to point out if their game was designed to scare the bejesus out of the player. 1998's Clock Tower 2 was marketed as a horror adventure, and a year after that, that was also the name that Konami went with for the original Silent Hill. So yeah, back in the 90s, nobody was using the term survival horror to refer to any other games besides Resident Evil. Got it? Yes, sir. Now, it could be said that Resident Evil was just so popular that all the horror games that came after it were just trying to cater to the market. And since Resident Evil laid the foundation for all the horror games that followed, it's only fitting that the official genre name be an homage to the game that started it all. The problem, though, is that developers keep saying they're making a survival horror game without any idea of what that means. Like 2022's The Callisto Protocol. From the moment it was announced, director Glenn Schofield described the Callisto Protocol as a survival horror game. But mechanically, that game has more in common with Punch-Out than anything else. Sam Lake described Alan Wake 2 as the first survival horror game that Remedy's ever made, but I wasn't able to figure out how the sequel was in a different genre from the original Alan Wake. Sure, resources are more limited, but you still had to manage your inventory and ration your resources in the first game. It wasn't like Silent Hill where you had unlimited inventory space, and that means Alan Wake has more in common with Resident Evil than Silent Hill does. As a matter of fact, since the early Silent Hill games put such a heavy focus on melee combat, I'd put them in the same beat-em-up genre as Streets of Rage and the Callisto Protocol. Oh, you think that's bad? Back in 2015, a lot of reviewers called Until Dawn a survival horror game. And I love Until Dawn. Enough to get the platinum trophy for it. But that's a game in the same way that ordering from the automated kiosk at Taco Bell is a game. It isn't. So, hopefully it's clear by now why this is such a huge glitch in the simulation. A lot of the games that people think are in the survival horror genre don't really have anything in common. The only quality they share is that they all attempt to create a horror atmosphere. And yet, to this day, people are still debating whether Luigi's Mansion qualifies. And that's why game genres have to be named after their gameplay mechanics, not the emotions they evoke. Cause as you can see, when they don't, it leads to mass confusion. A question, if I may. What the fuck was that? Just one of the many voices in your head. Oh, are you the one who tells me to burn things? No, I'm the one who tells you to pour the milk before the cereal. <gasps> you monster. In any case, you mentioned in another video that one of a genre's purposes is to allow consumers to find similar works. 
But if game genres are not meant to reference emotions, how do you serve players who are specifically looking for horror-themed video games? Fuck! I didn't think about that. That's okay though. I can fix this. Up to this point, this video has been directed towards people who mistakenly use survival horror as a blanket term. And I'm sure a lot of you out there have been watching in frustration, thinking I was missing a major piece of the puzzle. But as any true horror fan will tell you, the key to a good scary movie is in the build-up. Truth is, when it comes to game genres, the names themselves really aren't that important. Like imagine an alternate timeline where platformers are called Ooples and Banunus. It doesn't matter how stupid that name is, what matters is that people consistently associate that name with the same specific gameplay mechanics. So how about a compromise? Maybe it is a good idea to use the word horror in the names of game genres, but like I said, there's no such thing as horror game mechanics, so it should only be used as a modifier for genres that already exist. For example, if you describe a game as a horror FPS, that immediately tells you what the gameplay consists of, and it lets you know that the game is trying to scare you, unlike other first-person shooters. It's worth noting that there are actually two distinct genres of horror games, survival horror and action horror, and each of them do in fact describe different gameplay styles. It's just that most people call them both survival horror. So let's see if we can clear that up. Survival horror games center around stealth mechanics and come in two flavors, with combat like Signalis, or without combat like Amnesia The Dark Descent. But these games also feature a heavy amount of puzzle solving, and that makes them horror, stealth, action-adventure games. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, does it? So why not just call it survival horror and be done with it? It's because survival games have their own set of mechanics, like foraging for food and water to manage your hunger and thirst. No game that's ever been labeled survival horror has made the player do that. Strangely though, despite the fact that so-called survival horror games never have any actual survival mechanics, Google's under the impression that these two completely separate genres are one and the same. Stop lying. On the other side of the coin is action horror. These kinds of games are the result of a designer trying to make a horror game that feels more fun to play, either by accident or on purpose. Action horror games usually take the form of a shooter, like Resident Evil 4, but they can also be brawlers like the Callisto Protocol. In these games, resources are slightly more abundant, and there's a bigger focus on combat encounters. You still with me? Alright, now check this out. Beating the original Resident Evil games under certain conditions gives you access to high-powered weapons with infinite ammo. So once you have a Desert Eagle that never has to be reloaded, or an RPG with a bajillion rockets, you don't need to conserve ammo anymore. And at that point, doesn't Resident Evil stop being a survival horror game? Or should playing with the infinite rocket launcher be considered an extra mode that's separate from the main game? But doesn't unlocking the infinite rocket launcher demonstrate that you've mastered the mechanics? How do you know if you're any good at the game if you don't have the infinite rocket launcher? Well, the way I see it, the majority of players won't ever see that. Statistically speaking, the majority of players won't even beat the game at all, so it's not a good idea to base the genre of a game on something that so few people will experience. But it's still an interesting question. After you've unlocked the infinite rocket launcher, what kind of game is Resident Evil? Let me know what you think in the comments. To be honest, I don't know if it's even possible to come up with a replacement for survival horror. It might just be the best marketing slogan in video game history, which is why it hasn't been contested for nearly three decades. What I do know is that the more people use it, the more confused people are gonna get. I would say that Silent Hill had the right idea with horror adventure, but that sounds like it would be better suited for scary point-and-click adventure games like Clock Tower 1 and 2. And even those games had action sequences, so why not just call it horror action adventure? I mean, it's a million times better than the alternative, but I think we need separate genres to distinguish between games that center around combat and those that don't. Here's what I'm thinking. For scary games that are more action-oriented, the genre could just be named after however the combat system works. So games like The Suffering and Dead Space would be horror shooters, and games like Splatterhouse and Condemned would be horror beat-em-ups. And obviously, action horror still works as a generalization. Kinda. I mean, not really, but it's fine. Then you have slower paced horror games that revolve around avoiding enemies and solving puzzles. Since they don't have any actual survival mechanics, instead of survival horror, how about 
Evasion horror. Yeah, that ain't half bad, actually. So hey, if you want to help course correct the video game industry, the next time somebody haphazardly throws around the term survival horror, you can let them know what they meant to say was either action horror or evasion horror. And if they're talking about Five Nights at Freddy's, tell them to come back when they're old enough to drive. 